So what I'm going to do in this video is something very simple. You can see it right there on your screen. I'm going to be modeling uh, a clock and we'll texture it in Substance Painter. I'll do something in GIMP to get the the uh, the clock face because uh, I mean, you could do this on your own by all means. I, I'm just feeling a little lazy and so I want to show you how you could grab something like this. And I'm not selling my image so I'm just going to have it in the background. After that, I'm going to show you where the scene is at so far, but it won't have the clock in yet. And in future videos, we'll talk more about how I textured some of that stuff. So what I've done is I've just brought a reference image into Blender and it lines up nicely in the middle. I'll see if I can find this again and I'll leave you the link in case you want this. And we're just going to do a quick modeling and texturing of this as we get close to the end of the series with just a few more things to add. So I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Circle. I'm going to use 22 vertices. Go into Edit Mode and Scale it up. And Rotate X90. And we'll get it to about there. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to E to Extrude. I'm going to pull back a little bit. And Shift Alt and click there. And then I'm going to press E and S and come into about there. It's not going to be exactly the same but it's going to be fine. I'm going to actually angle that up and then I'm going to come out a little ways and then E and S come in. Uh, we'll come into about there. And then uh, let's say we just head back down in. Maybe we'll angle it in a little bit. I just scaled it in a little bit. And that's basically going to be what we need. Uh, now, I am going to add some bevels to this. Actually, I'm going to do Control 2 first of all for two subdivisions. I do want it relatively smooth and it'll look something like, like this one. I'm going to add an edge loop or two, not too tight or anything. I'm going to do that and I'm going to drop an edge loop there. In fact, I think I'm going to select that and S to scale and angle it a little bit more like that. Okay, let's come over here. Maybe we'll drop an edge loop there. And um, maybe one right there just to gently sharpen it up. And I'm going to go with that shape right there. I think you can do whatever you want. Yeah, all right. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shift out to click that edge. And uh, shift D. I'll scale it in a little bit so we can see it. P to break it out. I'm going to take this and F to make a face, but I don't need the subdivision. This is going to be the clock face. We're going to have the graphics on it. S to scale, but I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I don't want it too far back. Just make sure it's big enough. Now that's probably flipped, so I'll come in here and I'll go into edit mode, Alt N, recalculate, flip. So far, so good. I'm going to start naming this right now. So I am going to, this is circle. So this is going to be I'll do clock in capitals and then face like that. And this one here is going to be clock body. We'll have that. And I'm actually going to apply this subdivision. Uh, you could try going down to one. And that's actually probably just fine. So I'll do that. And, you know, then you can come in and you can delete some edges if you want. I'm not going to bother. Uh, but we're not quite done yet. I want to create the glass, so Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere. I'll switch this to 16, and we'll rotate X90. Three to look from the side, go into wireframe, and one, and I'm going to get rid of all of those vertices there. Take that and scale it in the Y to flatten it out somewhat, and scale it up, pull it in, and have a look. Uh, I'm going to shade smooth and I'm also going to go control one and then I'll just uh, well not that just scale it a bit bigger so that definitely fits under I just want it to, to stick out a little bit from the, the clock itself I think that's relatively okay so let's double check that that's facing the right way and it is so let's do this and call this uh, clock glass I don't need that anymore. So there is my clock. So I'm going to save this. All right, so now into UV editing. Now, I'm going to apply that subdivision and that'll give me that and that's fine. I applied that subdivision. 
Okay, so now we're gonna start unwrapping this. So I'm gonna start with this, and I'm simply gonna go U unwrap, and I'm gonna get a nice big circle. I'm just gonna take that, and let's just move it out of the way, and I'll press H to hide it. Uh, I've got the clock face there. I'm gonna take that, U unwrap, and I'll take that, and do that, and then this one. And I'm just doing the same thing, unwrap each time, so I get a nice circle. All right, Alt H, let's bring everything back and go into everything. And um, the one that I care most about is the clock face, which I believe is this one here. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to, let's just select a little bit. Yeah, that's that piece, okay. All right, so uh, I'll take the body here. This is the body. I'm gonna bring that in and I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. Uh, actually, not that much. I'm, what I'm going to do instead is bring this over and I'm going to take this control L G I will scale it up a little bit and this I'll bring that in and this is the glass I'll bring that in and maybe I can move this over G Y no G X and then see if I can make this a little bit bigger. And fit it in, that's, that's probably good enough. Okay, so I got everything in there, it's unwrapped. And so we are ready to go. So I'm now going to uh, save this and we'll export it as an FBX. All right, over here in Substance Painter, I'm gonna click New, I'm gonna switch to OpenGL and select Clock Video and bring that in, and there it is. All right, and one thing I didn't uh, do, which I, I think would make it easier, is put on materials. I just named them here, and so let's do that. This is clock glass. You don't have to, but I, I think I'm going to do that. So clock glass, clock face, and clock body okay i'll save and i'll export that fbx again and i now have it in and i've got my main materials there okay so now we're going to bake the mesh maps i'll do this at 2k uncheck id and thickness and bake let's come to the clock body now and i'm going to use aluminum throw that on but i'm going to uh add a filter I'm going to use this matte finish like that, but we're also going to change the color to sort of a, a almost a, a black color. And I'll get this effect, and I think that's going to look okay for what I want uh, for this. And we may put some dirt on there. I think we will actually. So let's let's do it this way: color and roughness. I'll bring the roughness all the way up, and the color. I use somewhat of a dark brown color and a generator and dirt generator. All right, so we've got that. Now, the next thing that we want is the clock face. We'll work on that uh, next. And so what I'm going to do is I'm coming over into GIMP and I've brought in that image, okay, the reference image. I'm going to choose the ellipse right down in the middle, shift and control, pull till I get a circle that I think encompasses what I want, which is that I'm gonna select invert and delete. And I now have almost what I want. And I think what I'll do is I will select none and then we'll come over to colors and we'll do, uh, let's do a desaturate. And we could actually look at levels. Let me just see uh, how good this will work for us. If we want to, nah, we don't really need to brighten it up. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, so once we've got that, let's cancel that, cancel out of there. We just would come in and save that. So I'll, um, I'll export that over here as a clock, clock face video. And again, this is, you know, in case, if you don't want to make your own, 
All right, in this case, I'm just using something that somebody else made, but you know, it's just, we're just having fun here. So I don't need that anymore. All right, so the clock face, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm going to add a fill layer and I'm not gonna need metal or normal or roughness or color really. Uh, I'm going to import that image. So that's in my reference images, The Last of Us. Where is The Last? The Last of Us, Laundromat. And I called this Clock Face Video, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna bring it in as an alpha, just to the current session. And I now have that. I'm gonna drag that over to the base color. And I'm going to switch this to triplanar and shut that off and I now have that image there and that's looking just fine as it is and so uh just out of curiosity if I was to do anything is there anything else I'd want to do no nah, I don't really think so you can add roughness if you want I'll, I'll leave it on there so we've got that going looks fine to me all right and then the last thing is the glass and you can either uh, make the glass uh, or you can use a, you know, a preset, a smart material. But we do need to switch the shader to the one with Alpha Blend. And I do need to add an opacity channel here. So now we can add a fill. And we are on the glass, right? We, add, we can add a fill. And I will choose um, uh, color. Well, maybe we'll use a smart material. It's all the same, really. I'll just search for glass and I'll just use I'll get rid of that I'll use this glass dirty and all all it is is uh, a, a base material uh, you don't even need height you know we don't need height uh, we don't uh, we do need roughness you can adjust how you know the roughness like if you want it you know really shiny or like that the metallics all the way up and the opacity you know is the see-through aspect of it all right, so somewhere down around there. And uh, it's also got some dirt to it here. Um, and, uh, you know, we could you can just add that yourself or you can just use it like this. And then you can play with it here. Um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do one on our own here. So all right, I'll add a fill. We'll do color and roughness for that. I'll bring the roughness all the way up. And the color, let's do a dark brown. Okay. And... Add a black mask and a generator, and in the generator, choose the dirt generator. And we have a little bit of dirt there, and then you can experiment with how much you want. Okay, you could use track cleaner if you want. Grunge amount. Okay, if you want that, you can paint some of it out. And just one other thing, of course, you can use a custom grunge if you don't want to use the grunge that came in automatically. If you want to play around with this, uh, you can choose, say, OK, true, and then come down to custom grunge here, type in grunge, and then look for the one that, that, that you want. Let's say you wanted that. <laughs> I'm not saying that you would, but whatever. All right, so I'm just going to go back, though. And, yeah, so I'll, I'll stick with this one, though, so we'll get rid of this layer here. So we have created our clock. We, texture, we, we modeled it, we textured it, and it was very quick. All right, maybe you don't want it in metallic, maybe you want it in plastic, so you could just do a different body material. But that's how I would do it, and then I would just bring it into, uh, into the scene. Uh, really what I've been doing is I've been adding it in Blender, in the Blender scene, so I will show you that. All right, so I would paste it back in there. And as you can see, I've got uh, many of my I items here, almost all of them. I've got the wire basket, I've got one there, and I've got one down there. I should have the other laundry basket and all my other stuff, including the TVs and some signs. There are actually, uh, there should be three signs here. One, two, one over the washers, and another one over the washers, and then one over the dryers, and a couple more signs to, to create. And so uh, I will talk more about this whole thing in Substance Painter because I haven't been texturing individual objects 
outside of Substance Painter. I've been doing the whole scene. I'm going to talk to you about that next day as I finish up any last minute modeling. Maybe I'll bring the clock in here. I'll show you how I bring the whole scene in. Uh, I've also got the ceiling done. This is actually geometry. I wasn't sure if I was going to use geometry or not. I'm going to talk more about that, but I will show you an image right now of where the scene uh, is uh, just from Substance Painter, however. All right, so here's one image. And you can see I've got the washers in there. Uh, I've got the dryers. I've got some signs in here. Um, I've got a bit of a wire basket. You can see just barely there. I've got a, a ceiling here with the, the, the frame and the, the panels. And I basically used the floor material and I brought it up. And then I made some adjustments. I got rid of the rocks. I changed the size of, of, of these. I changed some colors and the amount of dirt and stuff. You can't really see much there. And that's really the plan. I don't want to focus on the ceiling. It's just there. Added a bit of a mission here and there. Uh, I wasn't sure. not sure if I'm keeping that or not. So there's one image. Now, the next image has a different sort of effect, and it's, uh, it's, uh, looks, it's a lot sharper. Uh, it might look like there's too much sharpening, and there probably is, but it was just part of the post-processing that I wanted to do. So I've got my TVs in there. I may angle them a little bit. Um, and basically, you know, that's what the scene looks like right now with all of the stuff. You can see the ceiling and stuff. So in the final image, I would not have it quite as sharp. Um, there's no shadows here yet, and this is just lit by the HDRI uh, from Substance Painter, so it's a screenshot that's post-processed, so there will be more in uh, in Cycles or in, uh, in Eevee. I threw in a back wall, and I used the same uh, material here on it. I just made some tweaks to it. I just wanted, I just want to block that end, you know, block the light type thing. So this is what I have so far. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to put the clock up, and you may not see it in this view, and possibly a couple other signs, and I don't know that I'm going to do anything else. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that, and then, because this is all done with UDIMs, and so I am at about, uh, where am I at? I've got a long list. I've got 10 in the X, 10 in the first Y, and so far, 6 in the second Y. If I do the clock, uh, you know, I may end up going more, so uh, we're looking at uh, 30 UV tiles or so, uh, maybe more. So uh, doing the materials is going to take a little while um, for this to uh, bring them into Blender, to export them all and bring them into Blender and start hooking everything up. But I'll work on that, and then uh, and I'll show you some of that as well. All right, so there's a little update. We got the clock, and we are approaching the end of the modeling and the end of the texturing, and our job is going to be very soon, possibly next video or the following one, to start bringing this stuff into Blender. Um, as far as lighting, this is kind of why I put these lights here, so that I could have aerial lights in that spot or point lights or something. And uh, I still have to do the windows. I'm not quite sure, although I don't mind them that much. They might be a little bit too shiny. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep thinking about that. But uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at so far. All right, so I hope you'll come back for the next video as we get very close to wrapping up The Last of Us Laundromat scene, my version of it anyhow. Thanks for watching.